aim as humanly possible. Because even with, with these colors, they're so similar. You try to think it's different. And it gets harder as you keep doing it. You have to memorize it. I think it was one on the bottom right. Nope. Okay. The colors that are more prominent are the ones that I'm always able to, to memorize. So that one's easy. Doing better than I did last time, I think. This one changed. Okay. Respectable. I respect. We were just kind of on one of these earlier, but. On one of these earlier, but just taking a look at bind, taking a look how it looks. You can sprint, you can run through. You can set the bots however you like. You can cut corners. This should look very familiar. And you should know the game. See it whenever you watch tournaments all the time. So if you work, you can set bots to various spots. You can literally set a bot that comes here and has a waypoint here, which we'll talk about in just a moment. You can put bots in various areas. Look, there's heaven side, like we were referencing just a minute ago. If you run all the way to the back, there is a bot here that just kind of auto spawns. And then boom, it's done. But it doesn't have to be done. Because let's let's just go through the whole map here, and really, it just wanted to get your wheels turning, as you start to think about where you can place bots to try to practice. Remember, I talked about isolating the muscles, right? So maybe there's a point in this map. This is why this is so much better than just doing CS:GO bots, or anything of that nature. Is that let's say you know this this spot over here, at this split, and you, I know there's like that's supposed to be that teleport here. But let's say at this split, you always get shot at this angle and this is a really hard shot for you. Well, you could technically put a jumping bot right here, all right? You can put a jumping bot right here and you can see the other point of view from over here. This gets your gets your mind going and that's really the beauty behind it. And you can see that it really has a full side of the, size of the, side of the map. There's a lot of thought and detail that went into this to really kind of get it to, to actual. And that's a copy of Bind. I think this is really great. And when we talk about adding a flick scenario and tracking scenario, I'm going to put it in just a raw environment to really get you just imagining what you can put here. So I'm going to return to the editor. And I want to highlight two more maps for you. We're going to do Valhaven next. Okay. I'm just going to play and hop in here, and then we're going to go through all of the tools. We're going to go through just about all of them. I'm going to keep it very basic so you don't feel overwhelmed. But I, again, the, the whole reason why I'm showing the maps first because you realize how much play potential you have. And you don't have to make a map. You don't have to. You don't have to make a map, technically. We should recognize... Um, this as well. See, there's a lot more bots here. See how it gets your mind going. It gets you thinking about things. This is a long shot. I can't tell you how many times you've seen an op at this angle, right? And as you kind of bounce around, you kind of see the map from various points. Because, you know, whenever you start, this is, this is you know, a very popular spot. So if you put a bot that just kept coming through right here and would go yoink, 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 yoink. be very, very beneficial to proving your aim, especially whenever you realize what you have issues with in terms of cutting the corners. And there's already some bots and some predetermined spots already. Just kind of get your mind going. And it's okay if you miss shots. Don't worry too much about that. I know there's a bot up here that's kind of by default. And then we go all the way back down. And let's talk about... There he is. That's the one I was referencing. And there's this guy. And let's showcase one more map. Because then we're going to get into the creator. And there he is. He's up top. Told you. I knew he was there. I was going through this quite a bit. Quite extensively. Going through all of this stuff. This is, this is, this is the goods. This is the meat and potatoes. Giving you full functionality of the gym. And knowing that you can pretty much do whatever, whatever you want. Let's go from a template again. Let's go from a Rainbow Six Siege map. You might recognize this one, actually. I mean, you should, especially if you play Rainbow Six Siege. They picked the most iconic maps, which is really cool. Recognize where various targets and everyone goes, right? Kind of get your head spinning of where... If you have a point in the map that you always seem to get eliminated from or you really struggle with, 
this is going to be where you start to set up the bots and move them. You know, maybe not move them towards a spawn. You know, you, maybe that's where not enemies are going to be. But perhaps you want to move them into smarter locations and kind of kind of play around with them. But we're going to strip this down now to bare basics. So now that you've kind of seen, just realize the potential seeing what a finished product can look like. And we're going to go really, really basic with this. So don't worry about feeling overwhelmed thinking that you have to create some sort of masterpiece like this. Because I am no masterpiece creator myself but i at least can teach you some of the basics so you can hop in here and have yourself some fun right and that's really going to be the the focus okay so let's go let's create a tracking scenario we're going to do something from scratch just so you kind of get the overall tools and get to have some fun because once you over once you understand the basic tools Realize that you can move any of those bots and hit play, just like I did there, and then hop in and have some fun. There's also a video guide that AimLab has. It is very helpful. I recommend the one that it mentions with setting up the bots. It might be a little overwhelming for you to place a lot of stuff in various areas. It starts to maybe reference Roller Coaster Typhoon, but just kind of get right into it and just set a bot down and then just understand the power that you have, which is what we're going to do right now. Let's get into it. Let's build a tracking scenario. Now I'm going to give you some quick tips. I'm going to call this tracking scenario. And then we're going to talk about the custom guns that you have. Because you can change them up, which is really cool. So I'm going to create this level. I'm going to use this train pattern. And there's a reason why I am doing that. I like the terrain pattern. And then if you hold right mouse click. And then you kind of fly up in the air with the AWAS. You can see here. I have my object. I like the tile patterns because I like to put up walls to kind of create an area. You can create it very simple. Just imagine all the aim lab scenarios that you have, right? If you look on the upper right here, you can put in various objects, various targets. You can get the shapes. You can see cylinders, physics, the grid. But we're going to keep this really, really, really simple. All we're going to do is just put some walls. Put some walls. Down. I'm going to use sci-fi. I like the sci-fi one. Put a wall here. You just drag and drop it. So I like to go one, two, three, four. This is why I use this tile. Just FYI. That's my personal preference you don't have to use this you can rotate this object there's a bunch of keys down here there's a lot of key binds so if you prefer having the key binds maximize on those I like to just click on it and just drag it that's my personal preference but you can click a key bind and then go to this right away and then you're gonna be good to go I just count one two three four one two three four and you can move this around as you click on it Move that there. And I'm going to expand this as well. I'm going to make this a lot larger. You can duplicate these. And duplicate it. Hit the keybind. Should duplicate. Let's highlight. Let's move it. And then we should drag it out. Okay. If it's not duplicating. That's perfectly fine. We'll just bring another wall in and we'll just rotate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually transform this while we have this here. I'm going to scale it. I'm going to drag this over just a little bit. Again, as you keep doing this, you just get better and better with it. I'm going to drag this all the way over here. I'm going to transform this because I'm just going to create a wall in front of me. And then we'll get right down into the nitty gritty. There's the wall. One, two, three, four. There we go. There's another wall. You can center it and make it pretty. Just because for, for time's sake, I am going to not stress too much about that. One, two, three, four. fly over this way. It's a keybind for snapping. Oh. There we go. And if you click on the little box here, you can move that. I'll move up a little bit. And then you just want to extend this. And then after this, don't worry, we're going to do both the flicking scenario and also the tracking scenario all together. 
It's kind of all done in one take. I'm just creating some walls, some boundaries. You can change the scale of the wall, but for simplicity's sake, for at the moment, don't worry too much about this. I'm gonna put another wall on the opposite end here. One, two, three, four. Let me stretch this a little bit lower. There we go. Let's add another wall. You can really have a whole lot of fun with this, and this does just take it takes a little a little bit of time to kind of get get used to, but once you get used to it, you'll just start you'll start to fly with it. I'm just creating a little little ring around me. So, because I'm gonna put the bots like right here, and you can make yourself move if you like in these scenarios, but you don't have to create a masterpiece. Keep it really really simple. Just I like to keep it really simple. I'm a pretty simple simple guy. Because then once we have these walls, we'll have our little safe little space. The reason why I didn't I don't make them too large because then it, I was worried and maybe people might feel a little claustrophobic about it. So if you put too too much of a wall there. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's move this up. Boom. Perfect. And then we'll just create the wall. We're gonna extend it. And you get your yourself a little area. And then we're gonna hop in game. I want I want you to see what that looks like. Slide that over. Nice. It's like I'm creating a little pen for myself. But I, I like that you can always change the terrain later, but I really I work well with grids. It's probably my my editing experience and what I feel comfortable with. And then boom. So if you hit play, your character is where you're going to spawn in under. See? And now I have these little walls. And I'm going to put some targets in front of me here, which are going to do both the flicking and the tracking scenarios. Right now you hear a pistol. I have the pistol that I'm shooting with. When you go to the editor, you can change the various guns. We're going to do the tracking scenario first because I think that's a lot easier to, to put together. But if you go here, you can change the various weapons. And you have custom weapons here. You can even add your custom recoils if you want. We're going to do lightning gun. Lightning gun is really good for tracking. You can do the length of time for the task, the light intensity. But in this scenario, we're just going to so we're going to keep it very straightforward. We got the walls up. Very very easy, right? So now we're going to make it even easier. We're going to just draw a drag in over a sp pointer spawner. This is going to be who's going to be tracking in front of us. I'll put it like right here. And you can load. Look at all these bots that the community have put together. And I've seen a lot of them like Pasu. But if you want to create your own, you can definitely do that, which is what we're going to do now. And there's also SmartBot, which we'll get into in just a moment as well. There's SmartBot there, which is also really good to kind of get you, kind of make it a lot easier. So if we did, I want to do Capsule, really like Capsule. We're going to do it so that it strafes in front of us. Then we're going to change this to where it's advanced, but... Smartbot overrides jump. Does it, it? It it takes things to another level. It makes your life a lot easier because it adds variety. Um, let's for for simplicity's sake, just so you kind of get the breakdown. Let's remove Smartbot real quick, and we'll bring it back in. Don't worry. Bring this. Click on this again. Set new. Uh, we'll do capsule. Just want you to understand and kind of get the bare basics of it. You can change its speed and direction. This is kind of good for like thin gauntlet where it's a very popular scenario across all lame trainers where you want to hit a really small target, you can change the speed. This changes its overall speed. So let's say I want to do 3.6, right? Let's say I want to add a lot of hit points to this. I'm going to add 300 hit points. Now what I want to do is on death, I want it to respawn. Now let's give it a name. We're going to call it Daz Tracking Bot. Hit save. Okay, we're not done yet, but I want you to see it in game real quick. Okay. See, it's a big boy. And it moves. You might need to adjust your volume, which is okay. I know I just turned it up for a moment. I'm going to turn it down another way. So you have the bot where it moves left and right, left and right, and, sh and strafes. And you can change this waypoint. So it moves to different locations, and we're going to talk about waypoints here when we do the flick scenario. 
you know, let's do something a little more interesting with it. Make it even more, let's say you're trying to really hone in on your mouse control, right? Really get that in. So let's click on the bot one more time. And we're gonna change its size. We're gonna change Let's do scalar. Let's do the height. We're gonna make it a little taller. We're gonna change its width so it's really thin. So when you see it go to an angle, I'm gonna do point three and depth, I'm gonna do point three. Make it really small. So when I hit save, let's go hop in. So we're gonna make it a really skinny one so it really hones in on that mouse control. So you're making smaller movements, right? Might've made it a little too tall, it's okay. I can make it thinner, but notice how you can change the spot which makes it a lot harder to track, right? I mean, you really start to have to hone in on that muscle control. And you can you can change the speed of this as you're kind of building out a tracking scenario because Thin Gauntlet is so, it's so good. And you can change the shape, and you, as you saw with the bots, let's bring this back up. I would like to add, let's move that around. And you can bring it a little closer if you like. You can kind of move this around. Let us do, excuse me, a... Let's do load dash tracking bot add a modifier. There we go. I want to change. Let's just keep it at a height of one. Let's see how thin we can get it. And I'm gonna change its speed so it feels a lot more manageable, so it's not overwhelming. I want to change it to let's say one to two. Let's try that. Really get used to that small refined movement as you go back and forth you can speed this up too you can keep speeding this up and changing it up yeah there we go that's a nice thin target that's not half bad if you're really trying to work on like your mouse control in the center of this wow this is actually a really good one i really like this one this kind of reminds me of thin gauntlet you can keep changing it adding different bots but this is a nice simple tracking scenario i think some of them have existed as thin gauntlet like it's just hitting a really really small target Probably even if you go even slower on this, but this is a really good one. Realize how much you move your hand with my, with your mouse control and trying to hit something this small, and then track it. And there you go. Okay, my hand kind of. I'm over here trying to flick way too much, but this is why we create scenarios. But realize how little you need to move to go back and forth. It, it's probably a little sharp on its on its edges, which you can also change if you want to change its distance and how sharp it cuts the corner. Let's go to this direction speed. So let's say it switches around. Let's do 50. And there's so much you can do here. There's so many objects. You can even put an object so it keeps like peeking, if you'd like. So it like peeks around a corner. This is this is why I recommended those bots. We can put them into, and we're we're kind of getting down to the very basics where you can put it in Valheim or you can put it in Bind. And there you go. So it's a lot. The direction is a lot slower, right? You can speed this up so that then you, the reaction time needed is not as dramatic. And if you like, you can even change this to where it's more of a click time scenario, which is why you have the custom weapons, which are really, really good. Like even there, that was that was a pretty good solid scenario. Like, I, I mean, that's something I would actually, I could see myself practicing on. And you can kind of get a lot more granular, a lot more unique with it. You can change this to, let's say, I don't know, a revolver, a pistol, or an eagle. You know, you can even just kind of go from the basic one. You can change the length of time. So maybe it's like three minutes that you have to do it if you just want like an intense one. So you can change that and you know, you can, you know, render what you see. So then you have the map. I call this tracking scenarios. You can change the elevation if you like. There's a, there's so much you can do here, but try not to get overall. Notice how simple we kept it with just a bot, right? And now we're going to add in a flick scenario. One where you're just going to flick to two, two different targets. You can put these in different areas too. I know one would be trying to work on your 180 spin. And let's try to, let's try to do that. Let's do a flicking on a 180. Let's say you're playing like Apex Legends or Quake and you're having to constantly worry about flicking to a 180, which is probably not as good as like CS experience, but maybe good for other video games. So let's, let's delete this bot and we're going to add in Waypoint Spawner because we're going to add in two different scenarios here. We're going to add in, we're going to put them within like in front of us here, right? Let me do new. I'm going to add in headshot. Let's do smart bot. Let's put in a bot here. Let's do headshot, like I mentioned. 
Let's do flicking. Flicking 180. 180. Let's do a nice 180 one. I know I was setting one up earlier for fun, and I deleted all of them just because I wanted to start fresh. Death on respawn. Let's see what type of scenario do we want for this. Hmm. Which one do we want to do? Let's do let's do jumping. Had had a little bit 180 and jumping. That that sounds like that sounds like a nightmare. So you have one HP on this, right? We're gonna have it spawn at the start, and you can add in so so we're gonna hit save on this. We're gonna call it flick 180. We're gonna have random available waypoints. We're gonna add some waypoints onto this so it gets set up. We're gonna skip the last spawn on random. And then we're going to add some waypoints where we want it to spawn right in front of us. We're going to put the size. We're going to change the size to 2. And then we're going to add both these waypoints in. So how do we add those waypoints? Well, we're going to add the waypoints under waypoints. So we're going to add one of them right here. Boom. Easy. Done. And we're going to add another waypoint in the back. So we're going to have a nice flick 180. I just came up with that. Because I, I was just thinking about, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of these. And then one that's kind of like jumping. Kind of throws you off a bit. So you click on this again. And remember, we had the modifier here. So we're going to add waypoint one. And I might need to adjust this again to get it just right. Let's see what that looks like. Might need to adjust this. See how this is a nice 180? This is good for my sensitivity to kind of practice. I probably should get them to move, but this is actually pretty good. It's just doing a nice 180 flick. You can change it. You can actually change this, so so you don't have to wait for it. So we're going to change the scenario so then when they spawn, there is no downtime on it. Delayed start, start on spawn, flick 180. Let's see here. I guess they're good. And let's let's add a little bit more variety to it. We can have them move around a little bit if we'd like. Let's see here. Let's exit out of this. I guess we do have it not delayed at start. We can change the bot though. So let's uh Oh, didn't mean to move that. Let's go to the settings here. Let's have it move for a little bit. You can have it move forward, backwards, kind of adjust, kind of do a little bit more of unique things here. Vertical time on max. Death three. Let's not. Let's add. There we go. There's the delay. We don't want any delay on this. Let me hit save and let me show you this now. And then we can add a little bit of a jump and add a little bit more versatility to it. And you can keep moving them in different areas, so it just kind of throws you off. I have it spawning behind me first. See how it's immediately jumping and you have to flick. I might actually save this one. This is not half bad. Especially because I'm on, like I mentioned at the start of this, that I'm on a lower sensitivity, and I apologize if you can hear my mouse, but as I throw my arm across it. This really gets you. You know, this is really good for Apex. Everyone always asks the question, how do you get used to your sensitivity? Well, doing a nice 180 and seeing if it's too slow, if you have enough mouse pad, this is a really good test. Instead of setting this up, I actually. I, might do a video on this. I might actually do a guide and say, how do you understand your full inches per 360? You can change it so they bounce higher, so they don't bounce as high. So they can, even you can create waypoints on where they go to and get really complex. You can say, I want it to go here, here, and like I want it to move at mock speed and like scare me as it's just jumping around. You can, you can have some fun with this and really, really play with it and create more waypoints, change the position, change the scaling, and just, you know, essentially have at it because there's a lot you can do with the bot. So if we come back, say it starts at three let's say shoots up in the air really get your sensitivity going let's just say it just skyrockets over the move to the moon interval time to where it jumps let's say this is point one you can just change these and it really starts to spice up the scenario and really changes things for you let's go back in so just remember when you make changes within the creator studio so it doesn't get overwhelming try to make small changes and work your way up don't try to be too ambitious at the start like as we start to do this you can put these on platforms you can create a little platform you know have a little more fun realize look at that look at that guy he's flying up in the air my man is going to the moon just like the stocks 
It's a really good scenario for as I'm throwing my arm across because I don't have the fastest sensitivity. Ooh, man, they really fly. I think I put it too high, but, you know, this is why you have these settings to really kind of change it up and throw you off. But this is this is this is a fun scenario. This is good. And it, it, remember, you can change the, the sky too. So let's say the blue really bothers you. You could change the sky. You can change the terrain. You can add objects. We can add a little. We'll have a little fun here. You can add some other little, little things in the way. You can add a shape. Maybe put a cube. Maybe put a cylinder. You know, decorate. At this point, once you create your scenario, you can start to decorate. It's like playing The Sims. You can put maybe staircases where you want the bot to to spawn. And there's that is sticks. So it can be sticky. You can change these so that it's higher up, so it starts at a at a higher point, if you like. You can make this bigger. You can scale it. Really move these things around and make it a lot more complex. But like I said, this is where you start to have your fun, right? This is where you get to to really experiment. Yeah, let's see. Let's move this on top of here. I need to make this a lot wider, though. Let's move around the camera. There we go. Got a got a thick, nice thick little staircase. Let's put them on the ground there. Let's bring the waypoint. I'm so used to playing like games like Roller Coaster Tycoon and moving these things around. It can be a little. You can do smart, uh, where, where it moves it specifically. So then if you're wondering where this will spawn, let's see here. Let's go up. I'm doing it more the archaic way. So just don't mind me. And then we move it right there. And there's a sticky where you can make a sticky, make a smart on objects. You can mess with that. But as you get better with this, you start to improve. This is kind of the bare bones version of it. So I hit play. Let me hop in there. You're going to see those staircases over now, not to the right. You can change the color of them really organize this really make this yours make this your scenario what you need to work on some out of flick Ooh, flew over there there he's over there so this is like a quake scenario man as you're flicking between various targets you can you don't have to make it shoot up to the sky either like i mentioned you can change change its its projectile and how much it's going up in the air and you can even do them individually if you like Let's say I only wanted to bounce just a little bit, make it more of a, a micro scenario. Let's say we really wanted to work on a, a nice broad movement and make this a, an interesting mini flick. You get go for long flick, then mini flick, and like really start to test out those those arms. You know what I mean? And then go right into a small movement. That's probably one that I would personally want to work on. Hit save, hit play, go right back in it. Recommend saving your work. And let's hop into it here. See how it's a little. I might need to do it a little bit higher, actually. But you see, you see what I mean. If you can get it just a little bit higher up there, so then there's a little bit more oomph to it. You could even change where hit points change and everything. You can get really granular with it. Right now, I figured I kind of keep it a little bare bones. But you do have that option available for you. I just want to get the boss just right now. Now that I'm kind of in it. Now I'm addicted to it. Now I want to see it just kind of done at the end of the day. Let's do 1 to 2.3 and just throw a random interval there. Really throw ourselves off when we hit play. And then we're going to go right into it. And remember, you can put these bots. So if you think you can copy bind, there you go. See how they're bouncing a little bit? Go from a broad movement to a micro one. Because sometimes you, like, let's say you have issues with, because AimLab is really good about telling you where your weak spot is, whether it's on the left or the right. Let's say you want to focus specifically on the left and right movement. This would be one of the, like with a broader stroke. Or let's say it's a micro movement. You move them right next to each other. You go boom, boom, boom. Or, or you add like 10 different bots where it goes here, here, here. And you want to randomize it and change it. You can definitely do that. And hopefully by showcasing this and enjoying going back and forth between various targets, you see just how... Not overwhelming it is. I know I kind of started off maybe overwhelming with just putting walls. Like the time to make something pretty to put yourself in a little box. And then I know they, they showcase memes like you want to throw a giraffe in there. Let's start throw a giraffe. Let me see if I can throw a giraffe. Do they have those? I know there's the stationary. Let's put a giraffe because it's cute. 
buildings and structure. Oh, decorative. There we go.